Hi, everybody. It's Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to CyberLink Power Director. And here we are in part four of our eight-part basic training for CyberLink Power Director. We've got our media in our project. We've started up our project and set its aspect ratio. Now it's time to start building our movie, making sense of all of this random stuff. And of course, when you're editing video, this is about 90% of what you're doing, making stories out of bits and pieces. The timeline in CyberLink Power Director is very nice, very simple to use. It does have some unique features. I call them eccentricities, like for instance, putting the lowermost track at the top of the timeline and then stacking video or media on top of it by going down. But for the most part, all you do is just drag your clips down to the timeline. And that's how you build a movie. I'm gonna add some clips here to the second video track. I'm gonna add one right there. So this is actually above the media that's on video track one. Now you can add and subtract tracks from your timeline. If you just right click, you can see that there are a couple of tracks that are hidden by default. Chapter track, that is when you're building out your chapters for your DVD or Blu-ray, a subtitle track. And if I were to select those, you see they appear on the timeline. But just to keep our timeline clean, we'll keep those hidden for now. If we select the option, I'm just right clicking on the track header here to get to these options. Let me do a little bit higher here so it doesn't run off the screen. You can see to keep things clean, I can remove empty tracks. And if necessary, I can add tracks. And when I select the option to add tracks, I can add video tracks, I can add audio tracks, and I can add an effect track. An effect track, let me just make these into zeros here for now. I'm going to add an effect track right above video track two, which means it's actually going to be between two and one. There's the effects track. When I add effects to my movie, I will have the option of adding effects directly to the clips on the timeline or adding them to the track, in which case they affect everything that is on the track below them, getting ahead of myself here. Let's, <laughs> let's remove that track for now and keep the timeline simple. Timeline rippling is the function of a timeline as you add clips to it. Now, for the most part, if you're adding one clip after another, after another, you don't have to worry about that. But when you add clips, let's go back to our media room. There we go. When you add clips to your timeline amidst a movie or in the center or remove things from the middle of a movie, your timeline is going to ripple. It's the clips to the right of that particular change are either going to move right or left to either fill in the gap or to widen out. And it doesn't do that automatically. You make the decision how the timeline behaves. So if I have this additional clip, and I drag it down between these two clips on the timeline. When I let go, I have an option screen that pops up. Do I want to overwrite the clips that I've just dragged it down onto? I don't want to do that. Do I want to insert it? In which case, it's only going to move the clips on that particular track off to the right. Or do I want to insert it and move all the clips on all tracks? So if I select insert, you can see the motion only affects the track where I've added the clip. Let's control Z to undo that. If on the other hand, when I insert that clip, I select insert and move all clips, you notice that it moves all clips on all tracks. The same thing happens when I delete a clip. If I select that and press the delete button, I have the option to either remove it and just leave a hole in my timeline or remove it and only affect the videos on that particular track or have the entire timeline ripple and close, which I'll select here, and move to the left to fill in that gap. Now that's an extra click you have to do. Every time you insert a clip, you have to decide whether it's going to insert and only affect that track or whether it's going to insert and move all the clips on all tracks. You see there are shortcuts. So let me just click off that and make no decision this time. And this time I'm going to hold down the shift key when I insert that clip. And you'll see that when I do that, now I didn't have to make that decision. It automatically knew I wanted to ripple. Same thing. When I delete it, you see I have the option of alt deleting, in which case it's going to ripple the whole timeline or control deleting if I only want to affect one track. So I'm going to click off that. I'll select the clip. I'm going to hold down alt and then press the delete button. And you see, I don't have to do that second step there of making a decision. 
That's kind of unique to PowerDirector. I haven't seen that in any other program, but every editing program I've used uses timeline rippling a little bit differently. Two other features to know on the timeline. One is trimming. Trimming is removing from either end of a clip. And you do that by selecting the clip, hovering on the point between two clips, and then clicking and dragging. That will delete or trim off the edge of a clip or trim off one side of a clip. When I let go, I once again have those ripple options. I'm going to select trim and move all clips. So now when I remove that, every video or every media file on every track moves left. Same thing would happen if I were to expand that clip, untrim it, I'll move all clips to allow for that. Makes sense? Rippling is just something you have to deal with. And once you get a handle on it, you won't mind the extra clicking or you can use the keyboard shortcuts. One other feature, sometimes you want to slice a clip. And you do that by moving the playhead over a clip or a set of clips and clicking the little razor blade here in the top left of the timeline. If no clips are selected on the timeline, when I click the razor, it slices through every media file on every track. See, I'm going to control Z to undo that. But if I have a clip selected on the timeline and click on the razor, you notice what happens. It only slices through the selected clip. Just a fine distinction. But that's timeline rippling, that's adding media files to your timeline. And that is the vast majority of what you're going to be doing when you're editing video, right? Is just assembling, trimming off the stuff you don't want, and then putting it all into an order that tells a story. Now in part five, we're going to have a little bit of fun, play with some special effects, and then show you how to customize them also in part five of our eight-part basic training with CyberLink PowerDirector.